How to Protect Yourself from False Doctrine and Cults There was a pastor who left the faith. He did not just wake up one day and decide to leave the faith. He read a verse in the Bible, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, KJV. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. He wanted to know how Satan works so that Satan will not take advantage of him. He started reading books about Satan. He started listening to atheists speaking on science and discrediting God. This man went so far into this that he started doubting the existence of God. He did not stop reading and listening to these false doctrines. He would literally spend day and night studying and feeding himself these false doctrines. One day, he stopped going to church and left the faith. Not all of us can protect ourselves from the false doctrines out there. There are many Christians who are weak in spirit. They still need to be fed with milk and they can accept any doctrine that comes their way. This is why many Christians have ended up following the wrong doctrine. Some Christians have also been initiated into cults. An older gentleman was testifying about his experience and how he joined a secret occult group. He spoke of how he was new to the faith and he moved from one church in the city to another because of his job. Whilst he was at this new church, he was introduced to a secret group. The person that introduced him used to attend the same church as this man. This man told him that the group is about knowing the secrets of the spiritual realm. He joined thinking it was a good group. He found out very quickly that this group was not of God and he left. We cannot blame people who have fallen and have followed the wrong doctrines. They were deceived and because they were weak in the spirit, they fell. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, KJV As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. It is good that we protect ourselves from false doctrines, but we must also know how to stop those who are spreading the false doctrines. So how can we identify false prophets? How can we identify wolves in sheep's clothing? You must know what their works are so that you can know how to protect yourself. What are their works? A sure sign of a false prophet or a wolf in sheep's clothing is that they please men. Galatians 1 verse 10 NIV Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. One of the works of these false prophets is that they want to be recognized as good people, so they please men instead of pleasing God. They water down the gospel message. My friend, the word of God is not there to make you feel better about yourself or improve your self-esteem. The gospel message is there for you to be saved. The gospel message is there to guide you into the kingdom of God. And the way only to do that is by first acknowledging that you are a sinner. And the wrath of God is the just reward for a disobedient sinner. And that you must be born again. There are teachers of the world that used to be good teachers. But the pressure from the outside world overcame them and went after worldly things. Now all they teach about is five steps to be blessed, six ways to be rich, ten steps to your breakthrough, and they tell people what they want to hear. What is important in teaching is gaining the heart of men unto God, but the false teachers are not into this activity anymore. The message of the gospel is difficult for people to first hear. But God has made it so that we all have conscience. A conscience that is moved and pricked and disturbed when it hears the gospel message. Why is the human conscience disturbed when it hears the gospel message? because it knows the gospel message is true. When people hear that there is a God who created the heavens and earth, their conscience tells them 
that it is true. That everything couldn't be here by accident. The world and all its complexities couldn't be formed by happenstance. When people hear that God created them, that He formed them, that He designed them in His own image, and that human beings are not animals and that they are not a mishap of the evolutionary process, their conscience tells them that this is true. When people hear that God who created this universe and the God who created humanity therefore expects His creation to love Him and to obey the laws that He has set in His universe, their conscience tells them that this is true also. But why do people fight with their conscience if they know this is true? The answer is simple. The Gospel message reveals to us that we are all guilty. Who wants to hear that they are guilty? That is why people suppress the Gospel message because the Gospel message points the finger at you. You, you and me and tells us that we are all guilty and have fallen short of the laws of this infinite God, who has set requirements for us that we haven't met, and their conscience tells them that all of this is true, and that God requires we love one another because all humans are made in the image of God and are therefore special in the eyes of God. When people hear that God requires, we love Him with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, and that the proof of this love is seen. John chapter 14 verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. But people do not like what their conscience is telling them because they know they have not kept His commandments. They know they haven't kept His laws and they are guilty. And they have offended and disobeyed a God who is eternal, infinite. Therefore they are guilty but their conscience suppresses the truth. Because if the truth be told, who wants to know that an everlasting God is angry with them? Who wants to know that every one of their actions, thoughts and deeds will one day be examined? Who wants to know that all their sins will be judged and the punishment for each of them are everlasting? Who wants to know that they will spend eternity in the lake of fire? The message of the Gospel is difficult for people to first hear. I once listened to a preacher who was asked, Is Jesus the only way to heaven? And he did not answer the question. He danced around the topic saying, I believe we all find our way to heaven individually. A second sign is that they give little or no reference to Jesus. They want to glorify and exalt themselves. They follow their selfish desires and make false prophecies. Jeremiah 14 verse 14 Then the Lord said unto me, The prophet's prophecy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them. Neither speak unto them, they prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. False teachers don't have the understanding of salvation or repentance, so they don't speak about it. False prophets don't like to tell the people what will make them sober. 
They don't get involved in the commandments of the Bible and the basis of the gospel, which is repentance. They leave that part out. They are more concerned with a seeker-friendly gospel. The gospel says, come and live in sin. Following the laws of God is outdated. The gospel is for all men and women, regardless of the sins the person struggles with. But the gospel does not encourage you to stay and live in sin. But the basis of the gospel is to repent and turn away from sin. They are good at masquerading themselves. We have read in the Bible about the wolves in the sheepskin, and the wolves are always about shedding blood. They are not easily seen and they can be mistaken for the real sheep. The false prophet hides under the disguise of being part of the body of Christ, but they are not. As Satan disguises himself as the angel of light, so also these false teachers are good at appearing as teachers of truth and the real teachers to be obeyed and followed. They are out there looking for who to pray in, and when they find one, they fill such with false doctrines. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 13 They chase clout instead of holiness. The false teacher is self-important and always wants to be known everywhere. They get involved in politics or public offices not because they intend good, but because they want power and to become influential in every way. They find all the methods or ways of gaining followers to themselves instead of populating the kingdom of God with souls. They seek power and fame instead of seeking holiness and the power of God. 2 Peter 2 verse 1 and 2 but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. We see in this verse Peter revealing that the false teachers will rise up from within the community of Christians. These deceivers will use deception in an attempt to convince believers to deny Jesus as Lord and Master. False prophets twist the scripture. The Bible is a manual guide for every Christian. It was written through the inspiration of God. Many people have given different meanings to some parts of the scriptures. Some people translate or give the exegesis to the Bible. The false teachers twist them to match what they want or what they want the people to do. In this way, many people are involved in this. This is why we must have a better understanding of the scriptures so that we will be able to hold on to that which is true. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. They give false teachings on sin. Sometimes they see people sin and they don't rebuke them. They are not against sinning. In order not to lose followers, they withhold the truth about sin from them and they talk more in grace in a way that is not. They give a different meaning to grace. There is one thing we need to use to shield ourselves from these false doctrines and cults. That is the word of God. We have been given this word by God to use. The word is full of truths. Everything we need to know, the truth has been written there. Get to know the Bible for yourself. That is a sure way to never be led astray. Know your Bible for yourself. Study the scriptures. If anyone says otherwise, you will know it is from the devil and they are those who preach false doctrines. After Paul had warned about false teachers, not only Paul, Many other apostles and Jesus himself had warned about the false teachers coming out of Christianity to go against the ideal doctrines of Christianity. One should have been ready to face them and find a means of avoiding them. If one places too much attention on the hearing part rather than finding a way to get rid of them, then such will become a victim. 
There is an importance in knowing the truth ourselves. Digging deep to know more about Jesus will help us save us from the wolves pretending to be sheep. It is not a bad thing to search for spiritual meanings or knowledge of the scriptures, but one has to be mindful of where he is searching it from. It becomes a problem if a false teacher becomes the source of one's knowledge. 